So anyway, we're, we're talking uh, Joshua 23. Uh, the title of the message is Possessing and Keeping God's Promises. So it started, um, if you think about it, you know, this is kind of a culmination of Joshua getting ready to, to call all the people together and tell them where they've been and what they need to do going forward. Um, it all started back, frankly, in Genesis 12 with Abraham being called out of the land of Ur, and he wanted to set um, not just Abraham apart, but he wanted to choose a people um, uh, as well, and he wanted to make them a great nation. He wanted to uh, make and um, wanted to give them a land, and he also wanted to bless all families through this nation um, with ultimately um, Jesus being from um, that line. So um, obviously that's the biggest blessing that we could ever get. So, um, But he had to do some things. He had to leave his country. He had to leave his father's home. Um, and he had to pursue uh, God's promise, and he had to actively pursue it. If he had not followed God's instructions and directions, we might not have had the covenant, or at least through Abraham, and uh, by extension, you know, Israel may not have got the promised land, at least through, through that. Um, so in Genesis 15, 5, he was brought outside, shown the stars, and said, look, see all the stars? You're not going to be able to be counted, <clears throat> your people. Um, the good news is, just like God called Abraham out, he's still calling us out, not just um, when we were unbelievers, calling us to an opportunity to, to uh, be with Christ, but he's also calling us out daily to walk with him, as we'll see as we get into to Joshua 23. <clears throat> so, um, kind of leading up to that, you know, you have, they're in Egypt, they leave Egypt, they're wandering, um, and then they cross the Jordan, and they're going to start, you know, going to start possessing their inheritance that God had, had told them that they were they were to have. Um, this is very similar to our Christian uh, Christian walk. Um, we're called to be diligent um, and to actively be engaged. So Israel was promised the land, but they had to they had to go occupy it. Verse 1, now it came to pass a long time after the Lord had given rest to Israel from all the enemies round about that Joshua was old and advanced in age. So kind of find now it came to pass, um, interesting, because um, it's, it's actually speaking to some planning and design um, of an interested uh, God and an involved God. You, know, you have some people that talk about evolution and different things, or even people that say, yeah, okay, maybe there was a God, but he wound things up like a clockmaker and just threw it, you know, threw, threw it down and walked away, and we're kind of all on our own, um, which is kind of, you know, reminds me of, you know, once upon a time, far, far away in a land so-and-so, um, almost like a fairy tale. This is not a fairy tale. It's God's actually using a people. He had a plan, and... Joshua was part of that plan. <clears throat> um, but he used Joshua as part of the plan. And um, what, what's interesting in here is, um, while they had a lot of work to do in clearing out the land for God, um, God gave them an opportunity to have rest. It's not just go, 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 go. It's, I do have work for you to do, but you're going to have opportunity to have some, some rest as well. And it was a long time after, the, after that that the Lord had given them rest. <clears throat> Is it not good that God, God's plan uh, offers us rest? And you think if we had to do our jobs 24-7, um, 365 days a year, um, that would be rather annoying. Um, kind of like my job most days, but I like Saturday. I like Sunday. So... And if you think about God's initial plan, right, when he did creation, what did he do? He made some stuff, and then he said, you know what, it's all cool, it's time to rest. So he even built that, built that end. Um, and like the Christian life, we're never, we're never done. So while they're resting, there's still enemies all around them. So we're not finished. 
Joshua is going to remind these people, Israelites, you've got all these people around you that probably mean you harm, that are not necessarily um, <laughs> um, moral um, and, and things, and, and so there's more work still to be done. And so, similarly, our Christian life too, right, we're, ne we're never really done. Um, we're going to have seasons of rest, and we're going to have seasons of work, and rest doesn't mean you're done, right? It just may mean it's, it's settled for a little bit, but that doesn't mean you stop praying, you stop reading your Bible, you stop going to church. There, there's, it's, just, it's, it's just a different place. Um, it's, it's a different place in your life. So in Hebrews 4, 6 through 9, it says, um, this rest is a symbol of the believer's present rest in Christ, not to be confused with the believer's ultimate rest in heaven. Verse 2, and Joshua called for all Israel, for the elders, for their heads, for their judges, and for their officers, and said to them, I am old and advanced in years. Joshua is knowing his time's up, and he wants to reflect with leadership all the goodness and the faithfulness of God. He wants to remind them and encourage them, um, and, and frankly, just challenge them, right? Because I think Joshua is, is aware that with all these people being around, that they're going to come into some, some issues later and maybe not do what, they, what they're supposed to be doing. He wanted to stir them up to keep them moving forward. Sometimes, in a similar fashion, we need to be stirred up as well, be it with pastor on stage stirring us up for good works or a brother or sister. Uh, frankly, that's part of what the body of Christ is about. Um, you know, I may be having a rough day or I may not want to do something or I may not want to see something. A brother may remind me, hey, hey guy, this is, this is what it's about. I, I see a blind spot, right? Um, so we can get encouraged in, in that way. In Ephesians 2.10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Um, sometimes we need to be reminded that we are prepared for good works. Because um, I, I, I sometimes wonder if we, you know, really grasp that. The other thing, too, um, with Joshua being old, um, he's run his course, he's run his race. Um, God gets to decide leadership change. If you remember <laughs> the opening of the, the, the book, God just says, yeah, Moses is dead. Joshua, you're now it. Um, so we know that Joshua is about to go and he's kind of giving it out to the people that, that somebody else is going to need to pick up the ball and run with it everything Joshua had to do had been accomplished. <clears throat> Men are interchangeable in God's, uh, God's plan. If willing, he allows us to take part. Otherwise, his will is still accomplished just by other hands. Um, I want to be hopeful, and you guys as well, in tune with where God's moving, what he's doing, such that I get an opportunity to play and not just be on the sidelines because it's kind of cool to, um, I mean, just think about this, this building when we built it, right? I say we because a lot of people had a hand in, in assisting. Um, it's kind of cool. You look around, and I remember being with Pastor Lee, right? We weren't really doing anything at this point. We had... <laughs> He had one of the pallet jacks, and we were doing pallet jack races. I mean, I remember that, right? We were getting on the pallet jack. Now, I'm an old dude, so I had fun with it, but he would go 100 miles an hour and just turn it, right? And I'm just, I remember those, those times. I remember, you know, just, just hanging out with brothers, doing work. Um, I remember talking to one brother who was really going through some, some stuff, and, you know, I had an opportunity to share with him and came back and later he said that was, that was helpful. That was awesome. I remember, um, I didn't know Carson that well, but I remember, and I was still, still real new to Christianity, and there was two days where 
you know, I just felt God's like, you need to pray with Carson. You need to pray for Carson. And so I went over, I was like, dude, I got to get God off my back. You got to let me pray for you right now. So, um, so it's just the opportunities, right, to, that we get to hang out with brothers and do stuff with brothers and, 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 and just grow in our, in, our, in our Christian walk. Verse 3. You have seen all that the Lord your God has done to all these nations because of you, for the Lord your God is he who has fought for you. Um, Joshua, what he's doing here, he's, he's trying to be encouraging by saying, look, see, what, see all the things that God has done for you. Um, that should be an encouragement. Um, we're, we're going to battle. We're not on our own. He's, he's, he's battling, um, battling with us, and frankly, he goes before us. What's interesting here is, is if you read Joshua 23, um, Joshua was not talking about, sometimes you hear a eulogy, you know, or even somebody will talk about themselves, I did this and I did this and I was responsible for this and I was responsible for that. That's nowhere in here. Joshua wants to say, God did it. God's the one, serve God. God's, God's, God's the one that, that, that uh, did the battling for us. He's making it clear that, that, um, that it's all about God. <clears throat> because at the end of the day, leaders fail, leaders die, while God never fails or dies. He remains on the throne, and his work carries on. We're irreplaceable. So and I, I think, too, that Joshua was reminding people here as well, um, being the leader, I think he's watching what's going on and seeing without a strong leader, perhaps, or just knowing that people's propensity for life is not necessarily to do good things. It's to slide and, and maybe do the easy thing or, frankly, sometimes the wrong thing. Um, so I think he's just trying to, to make them aware um, um, and challenge them for what's to, what's to come. And not to get puffed up, right? Sometimes we hear we hear the saying, self-made man, um, and, and he made himself, and look what he's accomplished, and that kind of thing. But at the end of the day, um, who gave us our talents? So um, we may work on them. We may make them better. But I'd like to play pro basketball, right? I don't really, but I'm never going to be 6'9". I'm never going to be able to run as fast, jump as high, or whatever, so I didn't get those talents. That's God. So when you say, I made myself this, no, you didn't. God gave you the skills, and you just happen to, you're walking in them. So, and it's, it's by God's grace, frankly, that I can even draw my next breath. That's, I didn't create my next breath. God gave it to me, and he could take it away if he wants to as well. And then I was thinking about this, too. Um, kind of talents and tools and just the, the warfare that they had to go through that um, their prayer with God is warfare. Romans 8.26, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness, for we do not know what we should pray for or what we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. <clears throat> Sometimes I wonder if the groanings are really... He's asking for that again. He doesn't need that. What's he thinking? Um, and then I'm, I'm thankful, too, that I, I got to think sometimes that, that when we're praying that um, the Spirit is, is telling the Father, he's praying for that. He doesn't really need that. What he needs is this. And it's like, <laughs> don't listen to that, right? Um, I mean, some of us in here are married, and my guess is the person that you're married to is probably not the first person you ever thought, wow, attractive, this is who I want to be with. Um, heck, maybe you even prayed, I want that one. And God in his wisdom said, no, not that one, this one, because he knows best. And then sometimes I think, to getting back to the groaning, I just I just imagine God sometimes, you know, I want to say sometimes maybe begrudgingly even gives us what we want. Um, 
because we need a lesson. Um, you know, I think about my, my life. Um, I was brought up in church, and I won't get into my testimony, but let me assure you, it went way off track. And I remember, um, even before it went way, way, way off track, my prayer was, I see all these people in church, and I said, they're happy. I know they're drinking. I know they're doing drugs. I know they're with women. I know that da 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 I want to be like that. I want to be just like that. So my prayer was often, God, I want to be a half, half-tailed Christian. And ultimately, he allowed me to have that because that was part of the process that ultimately was going to, to lead me back. So, but I'm thankful that, that the Spirit intercedes on our behalf. <clears throat> Verse 4. See, I have divided you by lot, these nations that remain, to be an inheritance for your tribes from the Jordan with all the nations that I have cut off as far as the great sea westward. This verse is the only one where Joshua actually mentions his own service. The intent here is to make it clear that the land has been divided and it's their inheritance, but there's there's work to do to go claim it. Um, He was going to still use them to go possess the land. There's still more to do. Um, they needed to work to occupy the land. <clears throat> are you guys are you guys warm? Because I'm I'm bullets up here, man. So it's all good. I mean, I may be bullets for another reason, but it's nuts, man. So I'm afraid I'm gonna sh- I'm gonna short out my mic. <laughs> so no, it's all right. It's all right. That actually works. <clears throat> oh yeah, that's that's awesome. That's awesome. <clears throat> so like like the Israelites having to, you know, they go into the Jordan, they take city after city after city after city after city, and then finally they get rest. But there's still more to do in the Christian life. We still always have more to do too, right? We, we come to Christ, he's, we say yes, come into my heart, and um, that's great, but there's still a, a process of, of, um, of what we need to learn to, to frankly be like Christ. Um, wow. Hair products in my eye, that's awesome. Sometimes I think we get complacent thinking um, we've changed enough. You know, my language isn't what it used to be. Um, I don't drink as much as I used to drink. I don't, I don't talk like I used to talk. I don't look at women like I used to look at. And if you look at it that way, sure, you're better. But what are you comparing yourself to? If you're comparing yourself to what you were, that's awesome that you've made progress. But our ultimate goal is to look like, smell like, be like Jesus. Um, so once we get there, then maybe we can talk a little bit. What's that? <laughs> yeah, I think sometimes too, right? We we um, you know, if you're a new Christian, you'll see them. They're just gung ho. It's like I got to read, I got to study, I got to I got to pray, and then sometimes. You know, you see older Christians that we just we kind of park it, put it on cruise control or on pilot, um, and go through the motions of Christianity. Um, that's a little hollow. Um, not very, not necessarily very exciting. Um, not really rewarding, I, I don't think. Um, and then what tends to happen too is you're kind of walking through that. Something will happen in your life. The world will come against you. It's like, oh, I need God now, and you'll go, you'll go find Him. Um, so while we do need, while we do need God in the storms, um, and it'll take us back, um, like clockwork. Um, you know, I think He wants us to be with Him, be friends with Him. Talk to him, pray with him, read his word every day, not just, not just when we need to hook up. So, um, 
if you've got friends that are only ever calling you when they need something, you kind of, I'm not saying Jesus does this because he's God and probably doesn't think exactly this way, but I'm not so sure those people are really my friend. So. And then the last thing on, on storms, um, not all storms are put in play just so we, we come back. Some of them are for us to, to learn lessons. Verse 5, And the Lord your God will expel them from before you and drive them out of your sight, so you shall possess their land as the Lord your God promised. It was God who expelled the people before them. They were to remember they had witnessed the power of God in the past and the hopes it would strengthen, Joshua was hoping that it would strengthen their faith in the future. But they still had to step out in faith. God doesn't always tell us, this is what I want you to do, um, and this is what all will happen. Um, you know, sometimes we get a little light at our feet, and we, take, we just take steps and see where, see where God takes us. They were promised the land, go get it. And he wants to bless them. Similarly, he wants us to bless us with a full life um, because he wants our lives to be full and meaningful. Um, it doesn't mean that our life's going to be perfect um, because we're still going to have trials, tribulations, um, uh, needs. Um, but, um, but our life will definitely have more purpose. From verse 3 through 5, we see the rest that was granted Israel and Canaan was divinely given. As seen from the first verse, the Lord had given rest to Israel. As with the believer, believers present rest in Christ, Israel's rest in the promised land was temporary and conditional. <clears throat> Jesus says the good news is both the rest and the guide into rest. He offers rest to the sinner, Matthew 11, 28. Come unto me, all you who are heavy laden. Um, the rest begins at conversion. As we read in Hebrews 4.3, um, we which have believed do enter his rest. Um, this rest is a gift we choose and has no bearing on what we do. Rather, it has, every, it has uh, to do with everything he did for us already. He offers rest to the saint now, Matthew 29 through 31. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So the rest that we're talking about is part of the consecration process, um, as we read in Hebrews 4.11. Let us labor, therefore, to enter rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. The rest we get can depend on our effort as a believer in our relationship with Jesus or our disobedience. Disobedience is going to break our fellowship, creating stress and loss of peace leaving instead inner turmoil. Jesus, or, or Joshua was trying to focus the minds of his listeners on God while reminding them of the activities of God on their behalf. Joshua is casting the rulers of Israel upon the Lord and imploring them to remain steadfast in their faith. Joshua called the elders as witnesses of God's grace on their nation throughout the past. You have seen that the Lord your God has done all these things, all these things, uh, done all, all these nations uh, because of you. Verse 6, Therefore, be very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law, lest you turn aside from the right hand or to the left. Keep the word. This is the same as doing the word as we are not to be hearers only according to James. So if you just hear it and don't do it, you're accomplishing nothing. You've got to put it into practice. It's an uh, act of personal discipleship. Joshua says, keep and do. It's an action requiring us to be faithful in our walk. Don't turn aside to the left or to the right. Reminded of, of, of being at the beach, right? And you're out in the water 
and you're just kind of goofing around and you're not really thinking about it before you know it you're three miles down from where you started so I remember one time when I was doing I intentionally decided to we were just jumping up and down like this and as we were going we wound up so instead of jumping straight up I jumped a little bit this way every time and I didn't move as I was purposely wanting to wanting to to stay in place <laughs> and if you're not purposeful you may wind up in places you don't want to be we used to go shark fishing out of a canoe in Florida in the Keys and I remember one time we went out we didn't think we should because it was bad weather and we decided to go out anyway and the storm came in and all we had the trolling motor died we had a paddle and we just said the heck with it, it's not going to work and we drifted miles down and we finally got into a cove and the night was miserable because I'm in the key in the keys in a canoe um, no bug spray and just being eaten up by mosquitoes um, the only thing that I had that amused me was trying to catch shrimp with my hand um, for several hours that was all I had so um, <laughs> that was it so um, a dumb story but it, it again it's it's you know the trolling motor helped me to go where I needed to go no trolling motor no word no devotion no prayer you're gonna drift it's not it's not if you're gonna drift it's when you're gonna drift period end of story he says be very courageous to keep all that is written um, and the word courageous here is more than just bravery it implies a confirmation of truth producing um, strength of, of conviction the elders were to gain strength by observing and performing all the all that was written um, in the law of Moses um, some see courage as just an absence of fear it's like are oh, you courageous and then you talk to them it's like well I didn't see that the person had a gun right that's not courageous that was just I was I was clueless thankfully um, I see here really courage is a manifestation of strength derived from following God's law when we follow and keep God's word it will build a spiritual fortitude and a courageous character verse 7 unless you go among these nations who remain among you you shall not make mention of the name of their God nor cause anyone to swear by them you shall not serve them nor bow down to them the verse is a reminder and a caution um, don't go about the nations um, taking up their gods um, like Israel they're not to go into the world we're in it but we're not to be of it um, and if we're not um, if we're courageous we can be salt and light to the world which is what we're called to do the world's gods ultimately will cause us to stumble and keep us from God in all that he has planned for us um, so if you want to miss his calling go walk around in the world and you'll miss his calling for you verse 8 but you shall hold fast to your God as you have done to this day Joshua was exhorting the elders as an appeal that they firmly attach themselves and become partakers in a willing and practical obedience to the Lord sadly our natural inclination is to be tempted and we already talked about this is to drift and just become like the world what are you embracing you will see in judges soon in 127 Manasseh did not he didn't follow instructions in the exhortations he did not drive them out Ephraim didn't drive them out Asher didn't drive them out so quickly their process of hey we're kind of hanging out we're kind of hanging out then you read in 213 they're serving Baal so um, it doesn't take long idols today are far more subtle most of us would find it laughable to think that we would bow down and worship Buddha or Muhammad and yet we give our lives to chasing money chasing careers material things self-gratification um, 
and my favorite, worshiping at the feet of television, right? All those things are good. Um, heck, even your family is good. But if you're doing anything outside of God's direction and what God's will for it is, it's an idol. It's a hard thing. Where's your heart? <clears throat> Let's choose you this day who you will serve. We actively need to choose each day who we will serve. Joshua 24, 15. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. So purpose in your heart who you're going to serve. Take up your cross daily. Commit to be a disciple of Christ. Um, the world would just have you go with the, just the ebb and flow. Um, and if you don't hold fast to God and to the word and to be purposeful in your relationship with Christ, you will get swept away. How's your prayer life? How's your devotional life? Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down to the right hand of God. It's hard to run the race with stuff. Um, and the last thing I'll, I'll say reminds me, you know, I've fluctuated in my weight a lot. And just thinking about weight, there was, I like to play tennis. I don't play much anymore, but I had bloated up and I had gained about 25 pounds and I went to play tennis. Everything hurt, everything moved, and it wasn't an enjoyable experience. Um, then I went back, you know, six months later and I had lost some weight and it just seemed, I, I, I felt like gazelle. I wasn't gazelle-like, but that's how I felt. Um, so, you know, you take the weight of the world, you do what the world says, you're, you know, we want God's best, but we're, we're going to sample a little of this, we're going to sample a little of that. Um, it's not going to work, it's not going to work well for you. Um, God may still bless your socks off, but usually there's a, a pattern for how he works. Um, and, and the pattern is, you know, you're obedient, that's a, that's a good thing. I mean, even with, even with Joshua, when we talked about it, he was talking about blessings and curses. You do these things, you'll get blessed. If you do these things, I don't know, it's not going to necessarily go so well for you. Um, so, um, so think about what God's done for you, and that should be an encouragement. He goes to battle for you all the time, and just, just walk out your faith. And again, it's a, it's a daily thing. So, thank you.